A bill to extend particular concessions of the Hawksville Creek Agreement in Grand Bahama was passed in the House of Assembly last evening. The Christie administration implementing measures to revive Grand Bahama's economy in order to sustain long-term growth and prosperity on that island. Aldebee's Munnings reports on Wednesday's afternoon's session. Responding to criticism from the opposition, the government's parliamentary representatives from Grand Bahama's Pine Ridge and West Grand Bahama constituencies didn't mince words on why these Hawksville Creek Agreement concessions are necessary and crucial for Grand Bahama's future. This administration will be on the right side of history and the people and generations to come will see the amount of work that we have done to make sure that the residents of Grand Bahama is maximized in this negotiation process. The Grand Bahama has been held back. It's been held back, Mr. Speaker, because of the decisions that were made. And we, this government is saying today that we will no longer accept that. That we will fight for the people. We will give them opportunity. And we will cause things to happen. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie explained the need for diversity on the Hawksville Creek Agreement Review Committee in the House of Assembly Wednesday afternoon and how it proved beneficial. This has to do with an economy that was structured on the Hawksville Creek Agreement. No matter how we look at it, Mr. Speaker, it, in, it involves complex negotiations with people who represent corporations that have spent a lot of money and they argue have lost a lot of money. There's going to be no debate between the government and the foreign authority, I hope, as, as to what we're doing, how we're going about doing it, um, we'll just discuss the outcome and the end result. Mr. Christie is also optimistic that government's discussions with the Grand Bahama Port Authority on these concessions will be finalized before the three-month expiration date. In our discussions, Mr. Speaker, I have optimistically put the forward view that we should try and finish in two months. But whatever the position is, Mr. Speaker, we now know that we must keep the Bahamian people informed of all that we're doing. And the Prime Minister vowed to utilize all of the government's resources to inform the Bahamas to avoid any future criticism from the opposition. The House of Assembly has been adjourned until Wednesday, February 24th. In the next few weeks, the government intends to present the gender equality referendum bills to Parliament and the annual midterm budget report. Altafiz Munnings, ZNS Network News. Well, several House members contributed to the bill to amend those Hawksville Creek concessions. Members from both sides shared why this is important not only for the island of Grand Bahama, but the entire country. I think it's high time that we take a serious look at reinstating, reinstating the full tenants of the Mobile Property Act because when that was changed, Mr. Speaker, in 93, immediately after the FNM came to power, that was done really, Mr. Speaker, to help the real estate agents had nothing to do with Albert Bainman, who put them in power. This is money that we should be getting in the public purse every year to fund Freeport. This is the principle we need to establish for the rest of the family islands. Is this good for business in Grand Bahama? Is this good for business in New Providence? Is this good for the economy of the Bahamas? In other news tonight, the Bahamas telecommunications company, BTC, is looking to establish a new generation of app developers and software designers. They're hosting an event this week, and as Cleopatra Murphy tells us, she talked with the BTC CEO who says the event can unleash the talent which lies dormant in young Bahamians. CEO of the Bahamas Telecommunications Company, Leon Williams, says the idea for the next WhatsApp or other technological innovation can be the brainchild of a Bahamian if local talent is nurtured. On Thursday, BTC opened a three-day business and technology expo and hackathon at the Melia Nassau Beach Resort. BTC hopes to acquaint the public with new technology and products as it seeks to make Nassau the first smart city. We partnered with a lot of our, uh, our vendors and you see Google is here today. But in addition to that, uh, we wanted to introduce uh, the hackathon, um, Cody, and to get our young people into the writing of apps and then to help them along the way so that they could monetize the apps that they um, that they wrote. Fifteen participants are competing in groups of three to create an app. Williams says the winning team gets $5,000 and then moves on to compete in Puerto Rico. I think that there's so much talent um, and <laughs> you've got all the 
other ills that is happening within the coding industry, I think bringing a formalized regime here at this business expose channels the youth. Could you imagine? Head of sales for Google's Fiber Southeast region, Lance Artis, spoke highly of the event, adding that it is a great time for technology. Artis says the Bahamas can capitalize by focusing on a desired result. Not only from a government standpoint that will help promote that, but also from the private business and enterprises that are out there. Being able to have everyone center around some common goals, and then you guys will focus on those things that will help advance those technologies moving forward. BTC plans to make the hackathon an annual event on its calendar to help develop the skills of the nation's youth. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Thanks so much, Cleo. Violent crimes in the country reportedly account for more than 3,000 cases annually at Princess Margaret Hospital. It's a problem that's exasperating an already critical situation that's been ongoing for years, the shortage of blood. In this report, Carla Palmer highlights what's now being termed a crisis as the blood reserves at our primary health care institution is extremely low. Please come and donate. It does make a huge difference. But this time, Director of Oncology at PMH, Dr. Devon Curling, hopes the appeal of helping them to help others through blood donations is not only understood, but acted upon. For instance, last year in 2015, we had about 12,500 requests for blood products. For the, so these are patients that are in the hospital. The hospital total number of donations last year was about 4,000. So you can see that our requests far outweigh what we actually need. When the refrigerator doors of the blood bank opened exclusively for ZNS News this Thursday, the shelves were literally bare. Dr. Curling wants more donors to come in and fill those empty chairs as he stressed the lack of blood and its direct effect on hospital care and cost. The high crime rate, he says, is also impacting blood supply there. If you have a young man that's in a fight who gets stabbed, he's now coming in, he's bleeding. So we have someone who's been sitting in the hospital for five days, they finally get some family members that come in and donate blood, and now all of a sudden there's a trauma that happens. We've got to save that person's life immediately, and sometimes some of that blood can get diverted to that um, a person one. And obviously if you come in with a gunshot wound, you can have these patients using 10, 15 units in one surgery, as opposed to, and that delays five patients who just needed one or two units so that we can get them out of the hospital. Over the years, incentives have been offered to donors, and according to Dr. Curling, this is an ongoing initiative with blood drives nationwide. If you know, for instance, that you are O negative, which is our universal donor, we need people like that to come in and donate on a regular basis, just as kind of a civic duty and a civic responsibility. The Princess Margaret Hospital's blood bank is opened Monday through Saturday. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News.